Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so we've got this 2011, I think it is 11 or 12 uh, Buick LaCrosse uh, came in, ABS lights on, traction lights on. Uh, has a code for the right rear wheel speed signal being intermittent or implausible data or something like that. Uh, I guess it was referred to as, I don't have the code number in front of me, I, I checked it out the other day, or drove it the other day, and I could see on scan data that the right rear uh, wheel speed signal was dropping out pretty consistently. Um, I'm going to show you, I got the uh, Pico hooked up here. These have a little bit of a, I don't want to say unique, um, uh, wheel speed signal but it's it's something we're starting to see on you know more and more newer cars as they come into shop here uh, first ran across it on a Chrysler which works a little bit differently it's I guess I would consider a digital uh, wheel speed uh, sensor where they're actually supplying the sensor with voltage and then it's you know outputting a digital square wave as opposed to you know a VR type you know AC pulse generator uh, wheel speed signal. So I'm going to show you what we have. Uh, we got, I'm going to show you the bad one here uh, prior to uh, repairing it and we'll take a look at the good one and uh, you know kind of want to do this to satisfy my own curiosity to see how these systems work uh, so if we're ever you know up against the challenge of you know something that's not the sensor, not the tone ring or uh, you know something like that we kind of know what we're looking for. So I'm just probed in the uh, connector. It's super convenient. They've got it right up there in the uh, uh, inner fender right there by the fuel filler neck. Of course, this is for the right side and it does supply battery voltage back here, just about 12 volts. I, I assume it's a, you know, regulated voltage. It was like 11 point something or other. And let me show you where we're at here on the scope. So right now the key is on. We are probed into the signal return side of the sensor and we are just under one volt there. And let me get it up on the high side and that is just under two volts. So you can see that's the low and that's the high. So I'll kind of give you a reference there as I turn the wheel here. As it comes across the tone ring. Um, I'll show you the supplied voltage. Let me move my probe over. Let's see that. Oops, I thought I had an auto ranging scale still. Uh, let's see here where we at. So we're just under 12 volts there. Now this is on the supply side with the sensor plugged in and we are at 11 volts, essentially 11.2 11 volts. I don't know if that changes when it's unplugged or not, but uh, that seems to be the, the voltage that they're supplying there. So we're going to pop back here to our uh, 5 volt scale. I'm going to go into the signal return side. So on a Chrysler, they're a little different. They, they supply 12 volts and then they float the signal return back on the supply voltage. Uh, quite a bit different. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just rotate the wheel here as fast as I can by hand. So that's turning it good and steady. And we can see the obvious problem back here. Our problem is not the speed sensor. Uh, so we've got this big giant gap. Of course, we, uh, I'll be honest with you, we did not need the scope to figure this one out. But you can see we've got something missing here where the signal stays high. And I'm going to show you why. So we can have a look at this tone ring. All right. So the inner rust ring is the middle of the hub. The outer part is the tone ring. You know, it's a magnetic tone ring. And you see that little gap right there that's missing. So we're good all the way around. We come around and we've got that big open spot. Therefore, I can't uh, pull the signal down, and that's what you get is a big open like that. So, like I say, you know, I drove this the other day, you know, visual inspection. Obviously, uh, you know, was key on this one. Nothing wrong with the sensor. Uh, this little guy just needs a new wheel bearing. So, I would record this process of changing the hub today, but uh, uh, the customer's a waiter, and I don't want to tie up any more time than I already have. I did get the new hub assembly right from right from GM. Good old American made baby. You don't see that too often from these folks. Uh, but here is that magnetic tone ring that they use on the back of these hubs. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, being exposed to the elements, you know, a six or, you know, five or six year old car, that's what happens. The rusting crap gets behind them and shows over. Uh, 
So I just, I just wanted to show you these wheel speed sensors in case you guys haven't run across them yet. You know, I don't know if anybody's seen them in the non-Rust Bell areas. Uh, a little different, uh, frequency of the signal changes, amplitude stays the same, uh, you know, unlike a, you know, VR style sensor. So it's good to gather data on them, like I say, because these are, you know, different than the ones I've seen on the Chryslers. You know, they may be different than, uh, you know, other, other vehicles out there. So it's always good to get known goods, known bads. Uh, so we'll put this in, we'll check it again real quick and uh, wrap this baby up. Well, there's our old bearing, guys. She was uh, definitely flaking apart on us, even taking it out. You know, a few more pieces were coming loose on it. Uh, new ones installed. I've gone ahead, hooked back up to that sensor. Got our Pico fired back up. We'll look at the waveform on the new uh, tone ring there. All right, here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel. Now we can see the difference. Take a peek at this. Sweet. No more dropouts. No more big glitches. All we gotta do is uh, clear the codes and drive it. But yeah, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, so we can take a look at this together. You know, see how these wheel speed signals uh, on these GMs work. Um, yeah, just, that's it. I really don't want more to say. So just for the heck of it, I went and unplugged it here just so we can see the power side is still at 11 volts-ish. And the signal return side is at zero, so there is no bias voltage being set down that signal return side. Um, I just thought it was kind of peculiar. It doesn't, you know, pull the sensor all the way to ground. You know, once it's plugged in here, so the sensor is plugged back in. I'll go back here on the signal return, and uh, you know, it just floats it just above just above that zero mark. So what's that put that at? Roughly 746 millivolts. That must be the low side. Let me just spin the wheel here a little bit. Yep, that's the high side. <clears throat> Actually, let's uh, take and zoom in on this thing a little bit so we can get a little better picture. Where does that put about one 1.66 volts. We get it down on the low side again. So two ends of the scale, yeah. yeah 953 millivolts when we look at it a little more precise. So somewhere it's right in there, 900 millivolts. So, anyhow, that's that. So that's it guys, uh, that's the digital wheel speed sensor on this Buick LaCrosse. Like I say, we didn't 100% need the scope for this one because of visual inspection. However, it is good to gather these waveforms when you have the opportunity to. Uh, I suppose if we could not see that tone ring, you know, at that point we have to make a decision. Is it the sensor? Is it the tone ring? And if you don't know what the amplitude of the signal is supposed to be, uh, because they don't have it in any of their literature. The only thing that they state is that it is supplied with 11 volts and that it produces a digital square wave. And that's it. It gives you no, uh, no range and that's in the factory service info. So, you know, what are we looking at? Are we looking at a, uh, a digital square wave that is supposed to be 11 to zero, you know, five to four, two to one, you know, 10 to none, we don't know. Uh, but now we do uh, because we're gonna clear the codes out of this thing take it for a shimmy down the road and everything's going to be good and happy and we know what a known good is supposed to be so that's it guys i uh, hope you enjoyed it check us out google plus facebook subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching so there's our scan data this is after the repair i've got both wheel speed sensors pulled up on the screen there as you can see as indicated by the top left. And uh, no more dropouts and glitches. Go ahead and take back off here. Everything is looking beautiful.